Hey there, you're watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa, and today I am here with more Skyrim. Mala and her companions Enigo and Joran are here in Solitude's Tavern, enjoying a rest after a long trek from the Greybeards. And Mala has a uh, bit a good bartender, I think. Doesn't look like there's much to it. Chatting with Inigo, as you can see here. And before we and actually let me just tab out so that he doesn't talk all the way through this little introduction. What we've done since the last episode is Mala went to the Greybeards and asked them whether they would hold the peace summit there. After some persuasion, Arngear said yes. But he was unable to help her with the other things that Mala needs, such as trapping a dragon. So she's put that temporarily on the back burner because she needs to organize the peace summit between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials first. Then, having gotten the war off of Jarl Balgriff's doorstep, the Jarl of Whiterun, he will agree to allow Mala to trap a dragon. So that's why we are here now in solitude to talk to General Tullius. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon on Ephratus, third of Sun's Height in 4E201. And before going over, Mala has spent the night in comfortable uh, lodgings here at the inn. And I thought it might be fun to have Inigo read us Kolb and the Dragon, one of the two books that he can read. That's great fun. So let's have him do that now. Yes? Inigo, could you... I understand you are quite a talented narrator. Could you read Corbin the Dragon aloud, please? I'm sure I would enjoy it very much. In fact, I'll have a cup of tea while listening. Okay, let us embark on a literary adventure. I hope we win Kolb and the Dragon, an adventure for Lord Boys. And other races and genders too. Kolb was a brave Nord wo He was a brave warrior. One day, <laughs> his chief asked Kolb to slay an evil dragon that threatened their village. Go through the mountain pass, Kolb, his chief said. You will find the dragon on the other side. Kolb took his favorite axe and shield and walked to the pass where he found a cold cave, a windy cave, and a narrow trail. What way should we go? Oh, this is like your other book, Inigo the Brave. It's like a choose your adventure book. All right. Hmm. I've always felt it was good to follow the wind. The wind takes you to most interesting places. And whenever I visit the Greybeards, I say, wind guides you in greeting. So let's follow the wind. A strong gust of wind blew Kolb's torch out and knocked him into a pit where he split his head and died. I don't think that was the best ending. Oh, Inigo, that could not be the entire book. Does that mean I chose the wrong path? I think you should read it again. Good. I never tire of this book. Kolb was a brave Nord war- He was a brave warrior. One day, his chief asked Kolb to slay an evil dragon that threatened their village. Go through the mountain pass, Kolb, his chief said. You will find the dragon on the other side. Kolb took his favorite axe and shield and walked to the pass where he found a cold cave. A windy cave and a narrow trail. What way should we go? <laughs> Mala, as you can see, is enjoying her tea while uh, sitting at the table. And that's just a part of... Um, that is a part of... I need my mod for eating and drinking not my mod but the mod i have for eating and drinking and you can find out more about that mod on nexus the skyrim nexus google that 
but let's hope walking up the trail is the correct answer in this case. Climbing up, Kolb found a camp. He met a wise man who shared bread and showed him two paths to the dragon's lair. One went through the hills, the other to a marsh. Do we trust this man? What if he poisoned our bread? If we survive dinner, where do we go? Definitely the hills. That seems much safer than a marsh and many uh, fewer mosquitoes. Kolb stepped onto a rocky hill. He could see the dragon sleeping below and a tavern off-road nearby. What shall we do? This is exciting. So we can go to a dragon lair or we can take a break and visit the tavern. I think we should get sustenance before we visit the dragon. Kolb stopped at the tavern to rest before fighting the dragon. High elves ran the tavern, however, and poisoned his mead so they could steal his gold. What? That cannot be how it ends. <laughs> poisoned by a bunch of bandit elves? We didn't even get to seduce the locals. Shall we try again? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's read it again. I do hope he doesn't start from the beginning of the book, though. If he does, that will be, have to be the last time I ask him to read it again, or we'll be here forever. Yes, let's go kill a dragon. Kolb was a brave Nord. Oh, darn. He was a brave warrior. <laughs> One day, his chief asked Kolb to slay an evil dragon that threatened their village. Go through the mountain pass, Kolb, his chief said. You will find the dragon on the other side. Kolb took his favorite axe and shield and walked to the pass where he found a cold cave, a windy cave, and a narrow trail. What way should we go? Of course, we'll walk up to, to the trail as we know that's the correct answer. Climbing up, Kolb found a camp. He met a wise man who shared bread and showed him two paths to the dragon's lair. One went through the hills, the other to a marsh. Do we trust this man? What if he poisoned our bread? If we survive dinner, where do we go? As I had mentioned before, the hills seemed like the best choice to see the lay of the land. Kolb stepped onto a rocky hill. He could see the dragon sleeping below and a tavern off-road nearby. What shall we do? This is exciting. I'll have you know also that not only is uh, Mala nursing a cup of tea, but also I am as well having some of my favorite tea, which is Earl Grey and green tea mixed together with some milk agave nectar, a touch of vanilla, and some cinnamon. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> if you're having a cup of tea, or if you're not having a cup of tea right now, then pause the video, go get one, and then tell me in the comments what you had. <laughs> Let's go to the lair. Kolb found the lair where the dragon slept, tendrils of smoke wafting from his nostrils. The air made Kolb's eyes sting. He nearly slipped on the bones of men picked clean. The beast lay on its side, the throat and belly both waiting targets. Where shall we strike? Strike the belly, rip out its guts, or strike the neck? Uh, Mala, being bloodthirsty. <laughs> we shall strike the belly, rip out its guts. Kolb crept towards the belly of the beast, but no sooner had he taken his eyes off the head, it snapped him up and ate him whole, axe and all. Oh no, we died. Always strike the neck, my friend, unless you're fighting a headless zombie or something. Shall we try again? <laughs> as much as I am enjoying this wonderful tale, despite its many tragedies, We'll put the book away for now. I think it's time that we go and make a call upon General Delius. If we can talk our way into being seen by him. Maybe we can read it again later. Of course we can. Ah, before we go, how do you think I am doing, Inigo? 
I will admit that I have had some doubts about my worthiness as Dragonborn. I don't know if it's something that you can be worthy to be. Either you are born that way or not, but still, the fact that Alduin got away from me and the fact that I have so many fears sometimes, I run into a choice and I can't help but to run in the other direction. What have you to say about this, friend? How am I doing? I am honored you want my opinion. Go ahead. Give me the whole thing. Okay. Here's what I know about you. You smell good. <laughs> you are quite wealthy. Yes. Um, you have never done time in a cell. Unlike me, you are extremely well-traveled. <laughs> you own your own home. That is a big positive in my book. Uh, let me think. You are getting very good at hurting things with magic. Yes? You are healthy. Try to stay that way. You are good at getting what you want out of a conversation. You are probably influencing me <laughs> right now. You are strong, free, and single. Oh. Watching you fight one-handed is like watching a fish thrash around with an arrow through its eye. You will get better. <laughs> you are trying to help us all by going after that smelly Alduin fellow. Your efforts are to be applauded. I hope you win. You have good fashion sense. Hmm, let's see. You enjoy two-handed weapons and have learned to use their clout against your enemies. Just watch you do not drop one on your toe. They are heavy. You <coughs> are not into politics. Uh, what else? You grow more sneaky every day. Keep at it. Being heard is often the difference between life and death in our line of work. You are quite well read. Uh, what have I missed? Oh. You are quite the marksman. Still not a patch on me, of course, <laughs> but very good nonetheless. Now, how do I conclude? You are proving good for Skyrim. There are still many matters that need your attention, but there's no denying. You are pretty fantastic. That is that. I hope you enjoyed my insight. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. 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 <laughs> First of all, I'm reacting as me, and then I'll react as Mala, who's having a similar reaction to myself. Um, wow. And Skyrim is one of those games, particularly modded Skyrim, where it can really pull in on your emotions. And once again, Gary, if you ever see this video, I just want to tell you, man, you did such a good job. That actually pulled my heart a little. When he complimented Mala, he told her he had hope in her for killing Alduin, something she's had so much doubt about. He's, everything he said was correct about her. Um, and, you know, she, and if you've been watching this series for a while, you will know that uh, Mala has strong romantic feelings for Inigo, which may remain unrequited unfortunately, but um, ha any little bit that she has there that she can say about, about Inigo, that's just, that's amazing. So, um, let's see what Mala has to say about that. You want to ask me something? I don't want to ask you. I want to tell you that I, I am speechless. Your assessment of me is absolutely correct, and your hope and faith in me is what keeps me going. The fact that you believe that I may be successful against Alduin, and that I am doing good for Skyrim. Inigo, you are a true friend. Follow me again. Sorry, legs. Break's over. Ha 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 Oh, yeah. And Joran is hungry. Here you go, little boy. So, he likes clam meat. He's fond of clam meat, so I'll give him that. I'm also, actually, now that I think about it, I'm curious to see if he is ready to level up. Let's check his behavior. Nope, he's got no unused trainings. His player, player relation is 31, which is good. Um, combat damage is still 23, and everything else is set correctly. And he's still absolutely freaking adorable. 
Okay, let's get out of this end and into the intrigues of solitude. A beautiful, I say that very sarcastically, day. Spiced wine, the taste I've got a little work if you're interested, traveler. Fresh fish, straight on the door, forged by a master craftsman. Good day. I love to see some of the locals using umbrellas. That is part of wet and cold. A fantastic mod. Script heavy though, so you might uh, want to keep that in mind if you decide to install it. Mala, I think we need to be going actually this way. Let's hit the avenue first. Yeah, we need to go up to the castle. The way we were going was heading straight to the Blue Palace. That way. But let's head up the avenue. Good evening. I seek the ear of General Tullius. Excuse me. We stand in a very... a very massive seat of power. Castle door. Excuse me. I'm telling you, Ulfric's planning an attack on Whiterun. He'd be insane to try. He doesn't have the men. That's not what my scouts report, sir. Every day more join his cause. Riften, Dawnstar, and Winterhold support him. It's not a cause. It's a rebellion. Call it whatever you like, General. The man's going to try to take Whiterun. Jarl Balgruf. Balgruf refuses the Legion's right to garrison troops in his city. On the other hand, he also refuses to acknowledge Ulfric's claim. Well, if he wants to stand outside the protection of the Empire, fine. Let Ulfric pillage his city. General. You people and your damn Jarls. Sir, you can't force a Nord to accept help he hasn't asked for. If Ulfric's making a move for Whiterun, then we need to be there to stop him. Draft another letter with the usual platitudes, but this time share some of your intelligence regarding Ulfric's plans. Embellish if you have to. We'll let it seem like it's his idea. Yes, sir. You Nords and your bloody sense of honor. Sir. <clears throat> Excuse me? Good day. I take it I speak with General Tullius. Are my men now giving free reign to anyone who wanders into the castle? Do you have some reason to be here, citizen? I do, and I am not just anyone wandering into the castle. I have... Um, so, here's a little role-playing area. Mala was not at Helgen, and she has not seen Tullius, so we're going to skip these two. And we're going to go straight to uh, the message from the Greybeards. I am not anyone. I am, in fact, here on behalf of the Greybeards. I have a message from them regarding your conversation you were just having. The Civil War. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? Those hermits... And I want peace. They're convening a peace council at High Hrothgar. I am asking you as Dragonborn to attend. Why, there's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. As I had mentioned, I have been called Dragonborn. I have seen with my own eyes that Alduin returns we need a truce until the dragon menace is dealt with. They are getting to be a problem. 
But I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that. Dragons or no dragons. I definitely believe that this is would, would be what she says, painting the Greybeards as someone of uh, people of, of great power. The Empire cannot afford to snub the Greybeards, General Tullius. The dragons are a greater problem than I believe you realize. Uh, you may have a point. I'm always surprised by how seriously the Nords take these things. Then I take it that you will attend, as my guest. Yes, yes, fine. I'll come to this Greybeard Council, for all the good it will do. Don't worry, I'll come to this Peace Council of yours. Thank you, General Tullius. It was a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I take it that you are General Tullius's right hand? Talking peace with Ulfric? <laughs> you must be an optimist. I am. Either that or insane, I have been called both and worse. Good day. Mala holds her head up very high and walks out slowly. Considering that she has garnered a great deal of power and she hopes not to misuse it in the future. I don't know why I expected the weather to have changed in the few minutes I was inside there. Marlo, you did very well. Concentrate. The battlefield Thank is you. full of distractions. Ignore them. Focus on your targets. But I feel uneasy. Why, Marla? Let me stand here for a moment. That was too easy, Guardian Angel. He agreed. Surely I know the Greybeards hold great power, but... I don't know. I fear he may have some nefarious plan to simply get us all up there and then kill the Jarl of Windhelm. It was just too easy. But he now knows who I am and knows that I mean business. I have to become just as the Greybeards. My plan, I cannot get caught up in petty politics. Mala, the Civil War is a little bit more than petty politics. Yes, I know, but it cannot stop me because while we are fighting the Civil War, if the dragons come and kill us all, well, I think they have won. Do you not think? That's an excellent point, Mala. You're right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the Dragon Menace, obviously the end of the world is way more important than petty politics, as you put it. But, um, a lot of lives are being lost each day. You may have to be involve yourself simply because you are beginning to be seen as so powerful, Mala. Oh, I dread that day. But I believe I got a missive from Falk Firebrand. Let me first address the Emperor, the High the High King, or Queen in this case. Madam. Greetings to you and to your court. I am Mala. I am Dragonborn. If you have business, please see Falk Firebeard, my steward. I shall. In fact, I received a message from him directly. But you are the High Queen of Skyrim, are you not? Not yet, no. Although it is true my husband Torik was the High King, and I am his widow. Now is not the time to lay claim to such a title. This land is riven by war, and her people suffer for it. The Stormcloaks are a blight on Skyrim and like any blight, must be purged. Only then will I take my rightful place as High Queen. 
Therefore, you may be interested to know that there will be a peace council. Um, and the Greybeards, Hyrothgar, and General Tullius will be attending. Do you trust him to speak on your behalf? Hmm. A question I am all too familiar with. One my very thanes ask often. They worry that Tullius is so focused on the war that he risks forgetting what's best for our people. The real irony is that, while General Tullius is certainly no Nord, the people of Skyrim would be lost without him. Trust is always difficult, especially for my people. Yet we must trust in Tullius's leadership. For what other choice do we have? That is a defeatist way of speaking. There is always choice, even if they are less than uh, desirable. I understand that Jarl Ulfric killed your husband. Do you know why? Because that's what traitorous cowards do when they desire power. Ulfric coveted the High King's throne. He thought he deserved it more than Torig, and so he came before my husband and he... He shouted, with that terrible voice, like something out of a legend, or a nightmare. When Ulfric unleashed such fury, my husband, he... he simply ceased to be. That is all I will say, for it grieves me to speak of it. It has been a pleasure speaking with you, Yar Elisef. Hopefully I will see you at High Hrothgar. Be well. Pray for solitude and my husband. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Firebeard. Do you have business with the court? Um, I understand that you have sent me a message saying that you needed some assistance. You mean the Dragon Bridge issue? I'll be honest with you, I was planning to let that go. Varnius is a bit jumpy at the best of times. There have been reports of weird happenings near Wolfskull Cave. Travelers disappearing, odd lights. I suspect wild animals, or perhaps bandits. I don't think it's worth our time with the war going on. But if you want to clear out the cave, I'll make sure you're repaid for your work. Okay, and that uh, is the man who cried wolf. And I believe this is the wolf uh, Wolf Queen quest, which is what I'm looking for oh, to do here. There she goes again. What? Why that is it called Wolf Skull Cave? The cave has a bad history. Long ago, Potema the Wolf Queen used it for necromantic rituals. That's where it got the name. That was over 500 <laughs> years ago. Nothing much down there now. But everyone's always In convinced the, the cave the is haunted. The great Yarl of Solitude thus. Well, I am curious, seeing as you may have heard me mention that there is a upcoming peace uh, summit. What will happen if Ilicef the to Ilicef if the Empire wins the war? That remains to be seen. By rights, she has a legitimate claim as High Queen of Skyrim, but we must have the support of the other Jarls for that claim to have any meaning. Should they accept her rule, we will have peace. And General Tullius, does he show respect to uh, Jarl, the Jarl? Of course he does. What sort of a question is that? Maybe you've been listening to Erica. <laughs> There's been loose talk among some of the Thanes. I suspect he's the cause. You'll pay those rumors no heed if you wish to retain your welcome. She may be young, but Elisif is the Jarl by right. And here in Skyrim, if nothing else, we respect the traditions of our father's fathers. You do well to remember that. 
feel free to return to me with questions. The Blue Palace is an open forum. Mm-hmm. And Mala just turns her back on him, not liking to have been talked to that way, and not feeling that he is worthy of her time right now. And we head back out into the heart of solitude. And at this point, Mala has quite a lot on her mind. She's thinking about this high council. She's thinking about, um, oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. Wow. Very epic. Ah, this game. Or I should say this game with um, tons and tons of mods. <laughs> But uh, as we walk back slowly, or well, we run back to the uh, inn, there's actually one more thing I'd like to do really quickly before we end this episode. Let's head on in here to the Bard's College. And take a look at things. And it looks lovely. Good day. We have uh, a flute that Mala picked up in a cave that she has been given to understand belongs to someone here at the college. Dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, Not to mention the fact that Inigo actually will sing for you here in the Bard's College. And that's something that we will do in the next episode. We'll do uh, a little bit of Bard College stuff, and then we're going to go and do uh, the Wolf Queen's little quest line. And then we'll move on to Windhelm and talking to the Jarl there. For now, I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button below. And if you loved it, join the party and subscribe. I'll be so happy to see you here. In the next episode, as I'd mentioned, we will go to the Jarl. But I will see you there in Skyrim. As always, thank you so much <laughs> for watching. <laughs>